Hello everyone! This is going to be the first in a new series of videos about the poster cloth room and dynamic clothing. I will first cover the basics and then move on to more advanced topics. Now of course there will sometimes be different opinions on how best to do things when it comes to dynamic clothing in poster. What I will show you is my own process and hopefully give you a deeper understanding about not only what buttons to press, but some of my own workarounds and fixes for various problems that happen when working with dynamic cloth in Poser. So, first things first, let's start with some basic info about Poser's cloth room. What is the Poser cloth room then? The cloth room in Poser allows you to create a realistic cloth simulations. This could be clothing, but you could really work with any cloth or flexible material. So, what do I need to start to work with the Poser cloth room? The cloth room will work with any suitable mesh imported into Poser. We will get into what may or may not be a suitable mesh later on in this series. Your dynamic cloth item is typically a mesh created in an external modeling program and then imported into Poser. It is then saved to the library as a PP2 prop file. This file format will hold cloth room settings in addition to any other information a prop file would normally hold. So, you will find any dynamic clothing you may have bought from the Renerosity store in your props folder. This is also where you would save out your own dynamic cloth items. Dynamic clothing is different in many ways from the other main type of clothing, which is called conforming. They both have their own advantages. Conforming clothing is often more beginner-friendly and faster to use. It will not give you the realistic draping results that dynamic clothing can produce. Conforming clothing has been around longer than dynamic clothing and is rigged just like a figure with bones. Dynamic clothing for poser is typically unrigged. If you would like to work with flowing skirts and dresses in poser, I definitely recommend grabbing some dynamic cloth, either in the freebie section or from the Renerosity store, and start to play around. I will also provide a simple untextured set of clothing for the next video in this series. So, how does dynamic cloth actually work in poser? Dynamic cloth in Poser requires a frame-by-frame -frame simulation using the Poser animation timeline. The simulation itself is not real-time, but can be rendered out to real-time video in Poser if you so wish. The most basic setup is your cloth item and the item the cloth will be colliding against. This is typically a figure but can also be another prop. We will start with a simple cube and a piece of cloth. So, let's start by importing some content. We can use primitives that are already included with Poser. I am using Poser 11 Pro, so I will be navigating to the Poser 11 content folder. Let's import a primitive called Box. It's a bit small, so let's scale that up to 300%. Then, let's import a high-res square also included with Poser 11. We can then move that up above the box. If we switch to wireframe view, we can see that the cloth piece has a reasonable polygon resolution. The higher the polygon density of the cloth, the more realistic results we will get. The downside, of course, is computing time when calculating the simulation. Dynamic clothing usually needs to have a higher polygon count than conforming clothing does, which is one reason many conforming clothing items will not work so well in the cloth room. Let's switch to the cloth room now. The first thing we need to do is to click New Simulation. We can name that as we wish or leave as is. The default simulation has 30 frames. Let's go with that. The second thing we need to do is to clothify our piece of cloth. This lets Poser know that our mesh is now a dynamic cloth item. Next, we click the Collide Against button to select the box as our collision item. In the dialog, click Add slash Remove and select the box only. Now the setting will be activated and can be edited. These settings mainly control the distance between the cloth and the collision item. I usually keep the top ones between 0.150 and 0.250 for clothing items. Let's set those to 0.200 and leave the others as they are. What to make here is that dynamic clothing you buy in the store will usually have the settings done for you already because the creator will have tested out what works best for that particular piece of clothing. The dynamic group settings can be left alone for now. We will get into those later. Then we have the dynamics controls, which are the actual cloth settings. These can be very important, but we will leave them at default for now. 
Again, most dynamic clothing bought in the store will have these already set for you. Then we press Calculate Simulation. Wait for the simulation to finish. What can sometimes happen here is that you see the simulation being calculated. But then everything resets and there seems to be no data, like nothing happened. This is a known bug. We can solve this by saving our scene first before we do the calculation. Poster now has a file in your scene directory called a .abc file. This is where the actual simulation data is saved. You may see a .dyn file instead if you're using an older version of Poser. So now you have your first cloth simulation. You can play the simulation using your timeline, stop anywhere you want and render out stills or video. So that's it for this introduction. Make sure to look out for the next part in this series, where we will get into simulating our first cloth items. Happy rendering and see you all next time.